Hello, it's Tim from Toy Tinker Tim. In this episode, I'm troubleshooting and repairing a vintage Hasbro G.I. Joe sea sled. The sea sled was the first item in the 12-inch uh, G.I. Joe line uh, at that time that did not have a real-world counterpart. This isn't an item I ever had as a kid, uh, but it was given to me as a birthday gift. So it's a pretty unique item since it has its original box, uh, complete with a Sears price tag. It's still attached. Uh, insert packing is there and a extremely intricate set of instructions. Uh, its coolness also comes in the fact that this was manufactured as a kid's toy. You know, all the detail that you see here was put into a plaything and not something made for an adult collector's item, which is about the only time nowadays you see such detail uh, being put into an item. So despite the cool smoothness of it all there's a lot more work here to be done than meets the eye which has put this episode into my studio series uh, the process and patience involved is pretty high but rescuing vintage toys and uh, making them displayable again is what this channel is about so let's get started So in this episode, I'm going to focus on repairs for the scuba sled and straightening out the set of instructions. So I've started off, uh, of course, with putting some fresh D-sized batteries in the uh, waterproof tube here. Uh, the batteries get warm after having the sea sled into the on position. Uh, so there's clearly signs of life, but things obviously are not functioning properly. So I'm going to start uh, to trace back from the source of power to the motor and try from this approach to find out where the problem may be. The caps on the tube here for the batteries are very snug, uh, so I believe there should be a good contact uh, from within there with the batteries. The coil for the contact uh, looks looks good. Uh, it's a little grayed with corrosion, uh, but the base of the coil looks to be a bit off uh, from a good contact there. It's that rivet type looking piece there at the bottom. Uh, so that could be an issue between the corrosion and uh, not getting a good contact. So I cleaned up that coil. I just mixed some baking soda with water into a paste and then worked that over by hand over the wire. Uh, and then I was able to bend the end of that wire in a little bit farther uh, to get that good contact. And I still did not get any progress on getting that motor started here. So just doing a little bit further visually checking here, you know, I see the prop axle is kind of rusty looking. So maybe an oiling around through there is what's going to be called for. So the wire leads and connectors, these all look good from what I can see here. And the uh, battery contact strip looks amazingly clean. 
what I'm using uh, throughout here is WD-40. So I've given the exposed axle area uh, a treatment of WD-40 and I'm going to work the plastic propeller off. I'm going to treat and clean as I go with each section or area here on the C-sled. Uh, I'm using some steel wool on the WD-40 treated threads to get in there and get out the rust. There's a little bit of give and play here now uh, with the exposed motor axle and that wasn't there before so I'm going to work the, this black plastic cover off just to try to keep going a little bit deeper here. This white packing material around the base of the axle is something I can't quite figure out what that is made of. It's a little crumbly. Uh, it's feeling very fragile uh, from age or the material. And again, with the aging of the material, it's harder to tell. Uh, maybe like a styrofoam type material. Uh, either way, I keep working at it here to get it carefully removed. Now that it's out, there's still not really a great insight uh, to what's going on with the motor area. If anything, I've gotten a more direct access to make sure the WD-40 is penetrating the compartment with the motor. I've got a pair of pliers here to turn the axle and hopefully free up some of the seized parts uh, on the motor. So between takes of inserting the batteries, another possible weak link in troubleshooting has presented itself. Uh, the handle here, the section that slides left to right to turn on and off the motor, has had a plastic bit uh, fall off. So given the looks of it, this little notched out piece, I think this would have slid over the switch I'm imagining underneath this deck. Uh, the big bummer is there's no real access to this spot to fix that. Uh, this is now shifting into a bigger project than I was definitely hoping for. Uh, like other repairs, I'm going to refer to the patents uh, that I found through the Google patent search. So having this, this is going to help me to see a bit better of what's going on under the hood on the toy here. I have a view also here of the motor compartment and of course the handle switch design. Everything is a glued assembly on this vintage toy. So either it's gonna be a static display or I'm going to have to do some cutting and a lot of physical work. So toy repair and restoration is what this channel is about. So of course I'm going to open it up. I'm starting out treating the glued seams with some Bestine. It's a low odor solvent. And then using a uh, spatula wax tool to try to check and work any possible loose seams.
So as I'm working this, I'm periodically putting more solvent in WD-40 as I go. Um, carefully cutting against and down into the glue seams. Uh, it's important to take breaks because carefully cutting with uh, pressure on the blade tends to make my hand a bit shaky after a while. Uh, I don't want the blade to slip or slide on the plastic with these different solvents and um, put a gouge into the surface. Now it's time for the nitty-gritty, tedious work of going carefully along those glued seams with a hobby knife. I'm using a number 11 size blade. So finally, after days of knife work and using the spatula tool to work loose spots as I go, the top shell pries loose and comes off. Uh, the switch assembly is very simple in design and again I'm amazed on the condition of the metal switch. It looks almost brand new. There's like no tarnishing which although that looks good it's leading me to think the problem is so much deeper on uh, the C sled. So I'm thinking the motor itself is going to be in bad shape now.
The broken tab on the handlebar should be a pretty clean fix. I'll glue that after I clean the parts with rubbing alcohol to degrease them. And I'll be using uh, Loctite Super Glue, the gel, for that repair. Um, the handlebar section, it just lays into place with the tab section. Uh, it slides over the top of that terminal switch. Uh, it's very direct and simple uh, type of a repair after going through all the cutting of uh, getting to it, but uh, it's not a complicated setup once you get in there. The motor compartment area is glued a lot more seamlessly than this front control area was. So it's going to be even more tricky. And uh, I'm going to leave uh, that front assembly dome off for now while I prepare to begin and uh, do the work on the motor area. Here's a safety tip again that I've shared before. Store your blades in your knife with the tip down into the handle so you don't get poked. Uh, I learned this one back years ago in art school. So there's definitely a moment of pause in this for me. It's a big undertaking. And it's all work. Uh, this motor compartment is sealed. And there's only a slight seam mark for me to trace with the hobby knife. On the other end of it, what keeps me going is it'd be a shame to just have it as a non-functional display item. So it's time to get started on cutting the seam. Uh, one very major thing to do uh, to get this off to a good start is change your blades often. A dull blade not only makes the cutting uh, harder, uh, it's also going to increase your chance of getting injured. And uh, also you get your cut lines that run off. Uh, you'll go crooked, it'll damage your uh, vintage plastic toy. So there's a lot of repeating uh, steps, same as from earlier. 
uh, applying Bestine WD-40 into the cut lines using the wax spatula tool to check and work areas, uh, keep trying to help in the separation of those glued sections. You can see in the manufacturing here that glued seam on this engine area, the end cap section. Fortunately, it's an obvious seam, uh, so that's going to help when tracing over that uh, just over and over with the knife blade. Uh, at one point, very near the end of being able to remove that orange panel here uh, covering the motor compartment, I tried an approach that I had heard about of using a heat gun uh, from a distance here to help soften uh, the glued sections. So it's something I immensely regret trying. Uh, the heat gun was at least a foot away on a low setting. Uh, but uh, in its short time, it caused warping. Uh, you'll be able to tell here a little bit later when I go to reattach this back panel how much it put me behind on this project. And no, it did not loosen the glued areas at all. The blade still did all the work. So finally, after days of carefully cutting at that seam, I'm able to work off the back section. It's very basic inner workings. And even though I see it right now, it doesn't really sink in yet. 
and that is that that black plastic plug in this back panel essentially lets water flood into the motor compartment and so I don't understand why would you even want that as an option As I pull the motor out, and that is just uh, sitting into place with brackets that are molded in, the motor looks like a total loss. It is just so totally caked in rust and corrosion. Uh, in fact, as I'm inspecting the motor here, just kind of moving it around, trying to look at it, looking in the compartment, uh, the rusty wire connection on one of the terminals just breaks free uh, because it is so fragile from rust. So just to dig a little deeper and see how far this motor is toasted, I'm prying the tabs off the white plastic end pieces. And yeah, it looks just as bad on the inside as it does on the outside. It just threw and threw rust and crud. Even after taking the other end off the motor, the end piece here, uh, and seeing the rest of it, I'm having a crazy idea of not finding a suitable replacement for this motor. So I'm going to try and take another route and see if I can bring this back to life, uh, keeping the original motor and uh, making it function again so this literally looks like a nightmare right now especially when I have to keep pumping WD-40 over it uh, to help break it loose but I'm going to give it a try to give this horrible looking uh, mess of a thing back to functioning
So the process I'm taking is to put um, the parts here uh, into this cup and submerging them in just plain white vinegar. It's a household vinegar that's only 5% acidity. And that's it. Um, it's looking pretty exciting right now. I know um, tiny little bubbles coming off of it. And it's just sitting there. There's no big frothing or reaction taking place. At least that you can see at this point. But there is activity going on here. I'm going to let this sit in the vinegar for about a week. Uh, I'm going to also cover that cup with some plastic wrap just to keep it from smelling up the area. And that's also going to help prevent, uh, prevent it from evaporating during this time frame of it just sitting. Uh, I'll be checking back in on it to take it out in five days. Other than that, probably each day I'll just give it a little swirl in the cup. Just swirl the cup around, uh, keep the parts moving around there a little bit. five days later and here we are um, other than sitting in the vinegar I gave it a slight brush off with a brass wire brush as I took the pieces out okay I, I patted it dry and now that the heavy corrosion is off I'm going to be able to continue to break down the motor further So the insulator material is held on with these tabs. So I'm going to unpry that and uh, see what can be salvaged off of that. So lots more hidden crud on the inside uh, area I couldn't get to before here. Uh, the motor brushes, I'll definitely be making sure to salvage those. Beneath the magnets, the vinegar wasn't able to penetrate or treat much rust there. So I'll treat these sections again for three more days in a fresh batch of vinegar. I've got the motor brushes in pretty good condition. Uh, the brown insulator type material is crumbling away. So I'll recreate that with what I have on hand and what I have is uh, automotive gasket material uh, it's meant to be used as a way to make your own engine gaskets it comes at bulk in a roll and is intended just for you to trace and cut out to make your own custom shapes or gaskets that way After a few more days in vinegar, the remaining parts have cleaned up nicely. Uh, very little traces of rust left on them.
I'm going to take this wire brush attachment for my rotary tool and polish them up and then uh, give them a buffing here with the pad attachment as well. So afterwards it looks pretty good. There's some heavy pitting from that rusting underneath the magnets. Uh, but there's no holes that have gone through the heaviest pitting. It's in that hidden magnet area. So I believe the motor should still perform well when fully reassembled. So much less complicated, but important. I'm going to clean the plastic parts here with a degreaser dish soap and a soft bristle toothbrush. And then I'll apply a thin coat of uh, lithium grease on the teeth of the gears. So the reassembly of the motor was well underway. Uh, there's heavy pitting on the motor housing, uh, but it shouldn't affect the displayability and function of the toy. Here's what I came up with uh, for that insulator strip and a way to attach the motor brushes. Uh, the original brushes had a rivet type fitting that attach them into the brown insulator uh, material there. So I've used straight pins to fit the brushes over and then to use that to basically hold them into place on the new gray insulator material. And I'll cut them fairly flush, uh, the pins that is, and solder the wire onto them and the brushes. So I'll just do a quick hot test to see how I'm doing here. So it does the trick for this 50-year-old uh, motor. So soldering isn't something I've done a lot of, so don't hate on me. Uh, you can probably find better videos on wire soldering if you're needing to learn about that. But I'm trying it. I'm trying to do it. Um, I'll share with you the object is to heat the wire and not the solder. And by heating the wire, the solder will flow onto it. So that you're tinning the wire. Uh, so I can solder it onto the motor terminals in another step. So I've succeeded in soldering the wires to my motor terminals and hot testing is good. So after that, I trim the pins off and carefully fit the motor back inside. It's a very snug compartment here. Again, I can't understand why this drain plug was included in the motor compartment area. 
Uh, there must have been so many of these over the years with similar uh, rusted out motor issues. This mess that I made, I'm so frustrated. Uh, here's how the heat warped the plastic. You know, and I hate it because not just the damage to the piece from using that heat gun, uh, but also because more time is going to be spent just trying to correct that mistake. So I'm using my alcohol lamp uh, to carefully warm the plastic to correct that deformation uh, from the heat gun from earlier. I'm also using pliers that are heated to try to correct warping around that axle area where that um, like shroud over the axle is here. The rotary tool is being used again to hollow out the black plastic you see here uh, inside the orange end cap. What I'll do is use that two-part epoxy putty that I'm going to roll out into like a thin strip. Pressing that into this recess here and then pushing the two parts together uh, to get my fit instead of the gluing. So I'll sand the filled seam with uh, extra fine sandpaper, some 1500 grit. And using acrylic paints, do my best to color match the orange over the gray epoxy resin. So it's a pretty good fit. And uh, now to move on to the front controller switch handlebar and the front cover. So everything there fits back together pretty smoothly. I am going to glue the cover back on with uh, Loctite super glue, the gel control. The original packing material can't be fit back over that axle because of the warping in the plastic. So I'm cutting and trimming uh, a cotton swab pad material that I will pack in around the axle. And once I've got that in, I'm gonna give it a shot of WD-40. So that will just kind of absorb that to uh, help maintain and protect the motor area.
The black trim cover still fits fine, uh, despite that warped orange plastic. Now the propeller is reattached to the shaft there. It screws on counterclockwise. And after I've gotten it hand tightened, I'll use the forceps to hold the axle to finish tightening it on. So I'm reassembling a few parts back on. Uh, the paint over the two-part epoxy resin does a fairly good color match. And I'll load up the battery tube and another hot test. And everything is go for the scuba sled. You know, there's so much I had to abbreviate uh, in this video here by, it's still over 50 minutes long, um, but steps and process I've shown here can be applied to so many other vintage toy repair scenarios. And so here's a look at how the instructions uh, turned out from the wrinkly scrunch sheet to one that's going to store and open more easily, uh, reducing potential future tears or damage this way as well, having it straightened out. You know, a person could frame this one uh, and display it like a poster, all the detail and uh, graphics on this piece. I've done many episodes where I've straightened out instructions or toy boxes, and I'll have a link here to show you a little bit more in detail of the process I use with parchment paper. So don't forget to hit the like and uh, share this episode, uh, you know, on your favorite social media. Uh, thanks again for watching. Uh, remember to subscribe, show your support here for the Toy Tinker Tim channel on YouTube. So some final looks here of the restored piece. Um, I'll have a separate episode where I'll get into the corrugated cardboard box, getting that repaired and restored. And then we'll have another episode where I'll have a total review on all the features and the setup of the sled and uh, variations of that, um, how those had come out. Um, so keep an eye out and I'll have those posted on here as well.